there's not a whole lot of scripture tonight uh, because of what I'm talking about is actually has to do more with uh, giving some tips on preaching. Okay, and so we'll co- we'll ref- I'll reference a couple places uh, where we find preaching the Bible. Let, first, let me tell you uh, actually what my idea was at first, and and this might help you a little bit. And just my uh, uh, brother brother Justin had actually called me and was just kind of comparing some ideas on you know what I do when I'm preparing a, a message. You know, he's probably uh, getting prepared for Sunday and just wanted some kind of tips on that. And I'd kind of left today blank wasn't sure what I was going to teach and so I just kind of felt at that time you know you know maybe I'll, that's something I'll do Thursday just kind of give some up, updates we're kind of in between like practice preaching times which by the way uh, actually uh, before brother Dan uh, started started having some problems and everybody knows I think he's in the uh, mental hospital right now uh, and then they transferred him to another place and uh, I've tried to keep in contact with his mom but I haven't talked to him yet but actually, a while back, I had planned for at this time, I was going to have him actually preach today. He was going to preach the whole sermon. I was going to be here, but he was going to preach the whole sermon. And then, uh, and then of course, this weekend, three of you guys are, are preaching sermons out, you know, where, where I won't be even around. And then I was going to talk about Brother Nick, have, just dropping this on him, but I was going to ask him about preaching the following Thursday after that. And so just give you a chance, this is kind of the next step on the preaching schedule to just preach the entire sermon, you know, and I realized so far the preaching time has been a lot. Last time I think you did 30 minutes or something. So, so, you know, you don't have to go much, much more than that at that point. But, uh, but a lot of times preparing the sermon, it's not going to be much different when you have more to, more to say. It's just a matter of just being able to put it all together and, and, and know uh, how it comes together. So anyway, brother Justin was asking me about that. And, uh, and my first thought was, to go through sermons in the Bible, because there's a lot of sermons in the Bible examples, and actually explain a little bit about those types of sermons and what uh, what type of sermon it was and all that. I, I think you'll understand what I'm saying here as I go down a little little ways. And then this ended up being a little bit uh, different of a message, but I think it's going to have to be split up. Somewhere down the road, I'll come back and preach part two, maybe even a part three after that. But the, all I want to talk about tonight are the different types of messages, okay? Uh, and you say, well, there's only a handful of guys in here that are going to be preaching. What's, how does that help the rest of us? Well, number one, it's kind of nice for people, I remember this before I was preaching, uh, to just kind of have an understanding of, how, of what the preacher has to do, and it even kind of helps you appreciate that or even maybe understand better whenever they're preaching because you think a little bit about, okay, this is this kind of sermon, and, and here's what he's doing right there. And it can actually help you as well. But not only that, you never know when the time might come, even ladies, where you're going to be able to teach a lesson uh, to other ladies or to children or something, and, and, uh, and maybe some of these study, uh, uh, some of these thoughts and tips will help on that. And so these are just going to be some basic tips. Most of the tips are going to come in the next lesson, uh, but I'll share some tips on these different types of messages. But just real quick, I'll try to involve you a little bit in this, but can someone just say what the three types of messages are, the most common types of, of preaching? There's a name for them you probably heard before. Expository. Topical. Anybody? Guess? Textual would be the other one. And uh, so those are the three types we're going to talk about. And you'll find lots of examples of those in the Bible from the different uh, types of sermons that are there. But first, let me give these very important tips here. Number one, a preacher should have a clear message from the Lord before he preaches. He should have. Now, let's be honest, that doesn't always happen. (laughs) Sometimes a uh, the pastor misses the deadline, and hey, I got to preach something. And honestly, he could get up there and say, "Man, I really didn't just have a clear message from the Lord." I've heard of of guys doing this, and I've done this myself, where it's like halfway through the message, where before you really start feeling what it is you're preaching. I don't know if that makes sense to you or not, but it's a whole lot better to have a burden on your heart, kind of like uh, uh, Jeremiah, you know, uh, where the uh, the word was shut up in my mouth, and I could not forbid it, right? It was like a fire, fire in my bones. And, and really, a preacher, the best preaching is going to be when you really just have this burden that the Lord gave you. And uh, sometimes that comes in various ways. Sometimes it's a lesson. 
let you just feel God's been teaching you in your own life. That happens to me all the time. It's just this is the lesson that God's teaching me. And sometimes you follow, if you follow me on Facebook at all, sometimes you will see like, man, this is really on his mind lately. And it could be just something I'm noticing all around me. It's popping out every time I read my Bible. I'm like, this is where God's dealing in my heart right now. Well, here's the important part. As a preacher, you've got to deal with those things before you tell other people how to deal with it. Does that make sense? Let's say I, I, I'm having an anger problem. And I'm noticing that in the Bible. And so I've got to like go to the Lord and say, help me with this, Lord. Help me understand how to control my anger or something like that. And, and then now I can use that. Otherwise, I'm standing up here being hypocritical for number, <laughs> number one, right? Number two, I can now use that to show you, hey, here's what, here's what God showed me, right? Now, I don't like how some preachers get up and say, now I'm preaching. I'm preaching to myself here. And I'm thinking, well... <laughs> You got, an, you got an audience, all right? You can't just preach to yourself, preach to us. But at the same time, there's a lot of truth to that. A lot of times a preacher's up here, he's preaching stuff that he's already been struggling with, stuff that the Holy Spirit's been dealing with in his life through his Bible reading and everything. And so that's perfect for a preacher. You're feeling that, you're feeling the burden of that, and you're seeing that, and you're saying, now how can I help other people get through this? It's kind of like removing the beam out of your eye so you can remove the moat out of your brother's eye, right? It's that kind of an idea. And so preachers should have a clear message from the Lord. You say, oh, I just don't know what the message is. We'll start praying for it. Ask and ye shall uh, receive. Seek and ye shall uh, find. Knock and ye it shall be answered unto you. Open unto you. And so uh, maybe that's the case. Just a life lesson that's happening. You're seeking the Bible uh, to find the answers for that. And eventually you can share that. A second thing would just be maybe in your daily reading. I don't know, I'm, I'm sure most people in here read their Bible regularly, and uh, how many times have you read something that just popped out at you? Like, I never noticed that passage. I want to share that with somebody, or I never noticed that truth, you know. Uh, that would be a big blessing for me to share with somebody. And then you get up there to preach, that's your opportunity to share that thing that was kind of revealed to you, okay? And then the third thing would be this uh, uh, subject that, and this is kind of what's going on tonight, somebody asked you about it, and you have some sort of experience or some kind of knowledge or you've studied the subject or whatever and so you want to be able to help oftentimes uh it's a subject that you kind of even feel inadequate to to give uh, advice on but they've asked you you have some experience you have some knowledge so as a pastor what you would do then is just go study further try to get more information. I often will say, let me get back with you on that because otherwise I'm just randomly throwing stuff out at you to give you advice. And look, I'm just doing the best I can with what I got, right? <laughs> but if you can say, let me get back with you and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna study that. What a wonderful way to be able to preach a message now where you are showing other people something that you learned in your own life. And, and, and it isn't really that what teaching and preaching is all about, just imparting knowledge uh, that God has given you to be able to share. So that's what's going to happen tonight. I'm talking about this uh, idea of just preparing a sermon. How do you go about that? How do you gather the stuff? And, uh, and how do you preach? So primarily right now we're going to talk about uh, the di different types of sermons. But the next line there, what, whatever the case uh, in regards to a preacher having a clear message, however it comes to that, a preacher should be in regular communication with the Lord. I mean, I, the worst place for somebody who feels like God's called them and they have a burden to preach, the, the worst place to be is just to feel like God's not talking to you. You know, that, that's, a, that's a desperate place. And I've known preachers that get to this point, and really, uh, honestly, how long can you go with this dearth? I don't know. I think that's when preachers decide, hey, i got to retire, man. I'm just not feeling it. I'm not feeling and, it. Uh, and I've known preachers that get up there, and it's like I don't think they really had a burden and a message to deliver. They're just getting up there doing their job, you know. We don't want to be like that. We want to be in regular communication with the Lord and, uh, and, and, be, and, and do lots of, of studying of our Bible. In the Bible, we know this says uh, this is a qualification of a pastor, that he's apt to teach. Okay, and the word apt there basically means fit. If you, look, if you study the etymology of the word uh, apt, uh, you think about an aptitude test to see if you're fit to do that job or whatever, you know, you're fit to, to, to pass on, you know. And apt would mean fit. So someone who's apt to teach means they're fit, they're qualified, they're able to teach, and, uh, and they do that. Not necessarily that they just have this desire to, although that should, that should be part of it as well, I think, but 
uh, but they're able to, capable of teaching. So here are the three d- different types. We already talked about them. Number one's expository pre- preaching. Expository preaching. <clears throat> this is probably the best. Okay, I've kind of given it in the order that I think is the best. Right? They all have their place. They all have their place. But this is what I think is the best. Expository preaching could be uh, defined like this: reading a text and explaining the meaning and application of that text. Okay, <clears throat> reading the text and explaining. The meaning that would be expository preaching. So let me give you a few, first some tips. Let me say this first: Bef- whether it's expository, topical, textual, whatever, uh, probably you're not going to just start out by saying, "You know what? I think I want to teach an expository message, or a topical message, or whatever." Probably, uh, probably the Lord's just going to give you a message. You're going to be gathering up content. You're going to be just you know, saturating yourself with the Word of God. And let's later on figure out how we're going to present that. Does that make sense? First, you're just gathering the information and the facts and all that kind of stuff. But at the point that you think, all right, hey, this is the ideal situation for an expository uh, preach. And here's some tips. Be very familiar with the context is your next blank. Context. Very important. I've heard entire messages that were great. Messages, good preaching, hard preaching, only they didn't have anything to do with the text. <laughs> they were completely out of context. Uh, but the person just was reading their Bible and they saw this and they thought, hey, this is a great story to preach on. And so they preached on that story and then they tried to make some weird application that really didn't have anything to do with the text if you really know what's going on in that story. We don't want to do that. Okay, We want to make sure that we're sticking with the context. Sometimes that means you have to go back and read a lot further. Read a whole story, maybe read the whole book. So that you can understand where that part of the story fits into the context, all right? Next thing is this. Be sure to refer to parallel passages. A lot of verses in the Bible or chapters in the Bible, stories in the Bible are told more than once. And so you can go find out where the, another story, parallel passage, is used in, in the Bible. And that will help you understand what it is that you're reading. Number th- uh, C there, have a good understanding of the meaning of more difficult words. You know, you can tell when I'm underprepared, which is as many times as I'm preaching right now, I'm underprepared a lot. And when you get up there and you're just kind of skimming through words and you really don't know what the word means, so you either just don't define it or you try to define it and you're just kind of, sounds maybe like you're making stuff up. You want to be really familiar. What does that word mean? Where is it used other places in the Bible? You know, what's the etymology of that word? I mean, this is really important to find these kinds of things out. If you're going to preach expository. Every time I say expository preaching, I think about my grandpa who said, I I don't know if I preach expository. He said, some people say I preach a suppository message. (laughs) Anyway, you you get that later. (laughs) Okay. So you want to be, make sure to understand the meaning of the more difficult words. Okay. D. Don't lose sight of the main point of the message. This is very important. Very important on expository preaching. You can run a whole bunch of different ways. And uh, in just yesterday, uh, I preached, uh, not yesterday, Sunday night. I pre- Wednesday, sorry. That was yesterday. <laughs> Wednesday <laughs> night, uh, I was preaching from 1 Peter. And the text that I preached Literally, I preached every word. I've never preached like that before. It was just kind of the way that I saw it in the text. And, it, and every single word I went, I went, you know, I would read a section. And I even told everybody beforehand, read along with me in the Bible. And whenever I stop and start talking, just mark your place where we left off. Because I'm going to pick right up there. And then I start talking a little bit. And then we go back because it just outlined itself perfectly. But if you're not careful, uh, Paul's writing and Peter's writings, there's all these parenthetical statements and then there's like a parenthetical underneath the parenthetical and there's all these different things and you're like, what was he trying to say? So you don't want to run off on all these rabbit trails and miss the purpose of the whole message. And that's easy to do with expository preaching because you're just going like line upon line, precept upon precept, which is great, right, for your own study. But when you're trying to deliver that message, sometimes people get lost. Like, hey, I can't follow you. You know, you may have got a lot out of that in your study, but you're not doing a good job communicating that message to me. We've got to be real careful about that. But it is good uh, to do it that way. Uh, Nehemiah 8.8, if you're still there, uh, I'll just read that one verse out of there. 
I love this passage of scripture because it shows that way back during that time, and you go, I'm sure they picked it up from somebody. I mean, this is the way it goes. This is how they had a service, right? Everybody's gathered together. Young people, old people, men, women, children, everybody's there. And the preacher gets up from behind the pulpit. Actually, he's on a pulpit. <laughs> the pulpit, is a, we use the word a little bit differently. He's on a wooden pulpit, and he's standing up in front of the people. You see him reading the Bible, reading the text. And look at verse 8 there. And then he's got other guys with him that kind of, this is a huge crowd, okay? And so he can't just preach all by himself. They all go out into smaller groups. And verse 8 says, So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. That's what expository preaching is, is all about. You're going to read it to them, and then you're going to give the sense of what you just read and cause them to understand what, what, what you read. And so, I mean, that's just the, that's the perfect way to do it. Now, a lot of these guys in the Bible, examples from the Bible, they're not referencing Scripture because they're actually, God's giving them Scripture. And so, but we, we don't get new revelations today, so really the best way we can preach is just say, hey, God, this is the message that God gave us. And we just read it, give the sense of it, and help them to understand it. That expository preaching is the best way uh, to accomplish that. So I already gave an, a person exa personal example of, uh, of Peter, and, and man, there's just uh, another thing would be just to go through uh, books of the Bible, chapter by chapter or verse by verse, and preach that entire, expository preaching is usually done in series, because you'll go through a whole book and you just keep on going, and so you might just do one chapter a week or something like that. So uh, here are some pros about this type of preaching. This is a great way to let the Bible speak for itself, okay? Uh, here's one great thing about series in general, but even if it's not a series, if I'm just preaching the Bible, all right, let's say uh, somebody comes in, they're a visitor, right? And I'm saying, hey, tonight we're in such and su such, we're going through the, all the books of the Bible, and here's where we are. And let's say you're going down that list, and you just read something, and it really steps on their toes, Right? You know what they can't say? They can't say, hey, he just saw that I was here, and so he decided to preach a message about that thing, right? To just get, and people think that all the time. Uh, but really what you're showing is, no, the, the Word of God is powerful. All i got to do is start reading through this, and he knows that you're going to be here. He knows, you know, it's not an accident or, or a coincidence that you were here and you heard that preaching and it stepped on your toes. I don't know how many times I've been in the text just going chapter by chapter, and all of a sudden I'm on this particular chapter and I know what the subject's dealing with, and a certain person walks through the door and I'm like, this suddenly got a lot harder to preach. <laughs> right? Not harder, but you know what I mean. Like, I know I'm going to actually deal with some, something now. God knows what he's doing. Right. And so you don't even have to worry about always uh, preaching uh, what you think people need to hear. Just preach the Bible. All right. Which brings me to the next, to the next point Two there says this is great for series and series will keep us from hobby horse preaching. Hobby horse preaching. I've been to a lot of churches or heard of a lot of preachers, whatever, where they say you, you can go to that church anytime and you're going to hear three messages. You're going to hear something on the King James Bible. You're going to hear something about uh, the way ladies are supposed to dress. You're going to learn something, hear something about uh, soul winning, you know, or something like that. Those are great topics, right? Those are great things to preach about. But we don't want to get in the, to the point where everything we preach is just, you know, those are just the pastor's hobby horses. That's what he likes to preach about. That's what he likes to talk about. So they just come up all the time. People notice that. Right? What they want to hear and what's going to help them grow and learn is the Bible. We've got to cover as much of the Bible as we can, help them, help them uh, understand new subjects, stuff like that. So we don't want to uh, get into this hobby horse preaching. All right? Now let me tell you some of the cons of, uh, or the negatives of expository preaching. Number one, this can be more difficult, uh, a more difficult type of preaching when it comes to keeping the people engaged. All right. Now, obviously, it doesn't matter what style of preaching. There are times where you lose people. <laughs> they're thinking about other things. They're sleepy. They're tired. Or you're just not very interesting of a preacher or whatever. You, that's just going to have to, you know, that's just going to have to be the case. Pastor uh, uh, Sam Davison, he was, he's not, the, he's not a pastor right now, but when he was my pastor, 
And he was, he's known like nationwide as being just a great preacher. And he was, he's, I still to this day call him one of my favorite preachers. And when I went to Heartland, we went to Southwest. And at Southwest, I was able to sit under his preaching Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, unless he was out of town preaching for somebody else. And, uh, and I was like, this is going to be great. I'm never going to fall asleep in church again. I mean, this is Sam Davison. I mean, he crawls on the pews, climbs up on top of them, and he shouts, and he hollers, and, and, and this is going to be great. You know what I found after a couple weeks was I've fallen asleep during his preaching. It's not, it's not his fault. It's just we get tired sometimes. Or, but here's what they, he, he's kind of known for being an expository preacher. Or he preaches through the Bible. He just lets the Bible preach for itself, uh, speak for itself, and then he pulls out different highlights. But a lot of times when he would preach, he would start by building up this long introduction, explaining so we know where he's coming from. You don't want to just jump in the middle of a, a, of a text and not know all the details. So he gives the background. He gives some history. And, you know, hey, I fell asleep in school whenever they taught lectures like, you know, they gave lectures like that. So as soon as he started going into history and background, I'm like, you know. <laughs> But here's the problem, man. I was sitting up in the choir <laughs> facing the congregation. <laughs> so, uh, so after the sermon, I don't know how many times people said, hey, I saw you sleeping. <laughs> That's embarrassing, man. I don't do that. But anyway, uh, uh, but that doesn't mean he wasn't a good preacher. The problem is expository preaching is just kind of hard to keep people engaged, especially when he spent hours and hours studying all that stuff, studying all the background, right? And now he's trying to give you all hours and hours of study into one message. And you're like, man, that's great that you studied all that. And I'm glad you got it all. But yeah. <laughs> just give me the meat or something because I'm not ready. And, uh, and, and it wasn't his fault. He, he was just doing the best that he could to get us to understand what it was that he studied. The preacher that preaches expositorily, he may tend to want to share everything he studied, and people might not be able to take it all in. Number three, on the other hand, because that's one extreme, here's the other extreme. Expository preaching can become a lazy way of preaching. It can become a lazy way of preaching. And if, and if not enough study went into the message, it can be very weak. Okay, People didn't really get anything out of it, just a lot of details or whatever. But here's the thing. Uh, I remember hearing preachers say, at least some of the old preachers would say, expository preaching is a lazy man's way of preaching. And I never understood what they meant until I came across J. Vernon McGee. Anybody ever heard of that name? J. Vernon McGee. I don't even think he was a Baptist, but he was like, you heard him on the radio and on TV a lot. A lot of old people still love listening to him. And he had, a, he had a, kind of a unique style. He was able to pull it off because he really knew what he was talking about. He had studied all this stuff. But I remember listening to him thinking, man, that's like cheating. He would just go down the Bible. He would just read like a chapter or a couple lines or whatever. And then he would just kind of stop and just talk a little bit. And then he'd come back and just read that. And I'm like, man, you wouldn't even have to study. If you really knew your Bible, you could just pick it up and just start reading. Hey, let me tell you what that means. and Read a little bit more. Hey, And, and, and that's what some people think that expository preaching is. But actually a whole lot of work has to go into expository preaching. Otherwise it becomes like that. Where all you're doing is just say, you know, I, I know where I am this week. This is I, I like series because I got to preach so many times. It's nice to be able to know, hey, next week I know where I'm going. I know what's next on the. I don't have to think about what it is I'm going to preach about. It's already ready. But if I'm not careful, if I don't do enough study, I just go to that passage and we're just basically reading it and then uh, just expound a little bit. So we got to be real careful. I think expository preaching is the best. But if you're not careful, you don't do the preparation. Then you can kind of get uh, uh, become kind of lazy in doing that. So let's talk about the next one. You guys didn't recognize or remember this name here, but textual, textual preaching, which can be a lot like expository preaching. This would be a good definition would be choosing a verse or verses. It doesn't have to be just one. Choosing a verse and preaching a message based on the verse or a principle of that verse. So sometimes it looks a lot like expository, but you're talking about this one little section of Scripture. And this would be the case, like I said, where you're doing your Bible reading, and while you're coming across this, you're like, oh, man, that Scripture is so powerful. That's so amazing. I need to share that with somebody. 
Well, now that's a textual message because you're going to get up to try to explain that message. So you're going to have to go preach from that verse. Doesn't always require a lot of background because you're just given like some ba basic principles. And so uh, here are some tips about this. All right. And again, if you come across this in your regular Bible reading, think, hey, man, this would be a great text to preach from or something like that. Here's some tips. Start trying to, uh, oh, first of all, start, start trying to find those opportunities. Okay? Start trying to recognize opportunities for these types of sermons in your regular Bible reading. I don't know about you guys, but uh, every time I'm reading the Bible and something jumps out at me, I'm like, hey, that'd be a fun message to preach. Anybody there already? <laughs> you guys, that'd be a fun message to preach. Some people don't read their Bible that way, but if you've got a, somewhat of a desire to preach, that's probably what you're doing. That'd be a good one to preach. Just kind of make a mental note of that and start learning how to just find those uh, opportunities. You know, And some of them, I'm going to get to this in a minute, but some of them just jump out at you as that's perfect. I mean, it's just like giving me the outline right there in that passage, and, uh, and it jumps out at you. Start trying to recognize that when you do your Bible reading. Maybe even make, have a little paper where you can write notes. Now, don't get distracted. Bible, daily Bible reading is daily Bible reading. Don't get in the habit of reading one verse and saying, hey, that'll make a good message, and then start doing studying and going all over the place and looking into that. You're going to miss it, all right? Do your daily Bible reading. Read that couple chapters or however much you're reading as, as daily uh, Bible reading. But if you're, wanting to, if you're a preacher, you know what I'm talking about, and you see these things, just maybe make a note or write something in your Bible if you do that. I'll write it off uh, to the side. Later on down the road, you, you, it'll probably come back to you whenever it's time to preach and you're thinking, hey, I remember that verse or, or whatever. Okay, let me see here. Start trying to recognize that. Be, you can sometimes treat each point of a textual sermon like an individual top, uh, topical sermon. That's what we'll talk about next. All right, so, the, so basically you're looking at this passage of Scripture in this text, this particular text, and you have broke that text down into different points. And now you get to that point and you're like, I'm, a, I'm just basically going to explain this principle or whatever. And so to explain that principle, you're going to find all these other verses from the Bible and stuff like that. So that would be more of a topical idea, but you can do that as part of your uh, textual sermon. All right, go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. By the way, it's not as powerful as doing this with the Scripture, but in my life I do that a lot with just things that happen, happen to me in everyday life. Like I make mental notes, not on purpose. I've just done it most of my life where I'm like, hey, that's a great illustration for this biblical principle. <laughs> something happens in my life, my kids do something, and I'm like, hey, that'll preach. You know, we are... Like that, like that child is, you know, to his parents. That's how we are to our father. Anybody think like that yet? Like you're already seeing illustrations and thinking, you know, you get a, a you see something, uh, some, I'm trying to think of that illustration. You, you're doing dishes, right? And uh, you got a little pop in the bottom of your, of your cup and, and you fill that up with water and it overflows and eventually it's clear. Then you, all of a sudden you have a great message. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you got to remember Brother Austin preaching that message? Because he just saw that, and you're like, hey, that's a great message. I mean, I don't know if he, where he got that exactly, but, but that's just how you're t constantly building illustrations and, and, uh, and things that can be used. Galatians chapter 3, I think this would be a good example of, of a textual type. And you'll see these a lot in the Bible. I'm only giving one example, but especially in the New Testament, there will be quoting an Old Testament scripture, and they'll start breaking down what that scripture meant. Right, and, there, and, and making a point off of that. So look at verse 6, Galatians 3, verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. You understand where he's going? He's going to Genesis 12, which is a scripture that I'm sure a lot of them knew and loved and memorized. In fact, a lot of Baptists love that passage of scripture and, and, <laughs> and preach it a lot like they would have probably preached it back then. And he's saying, no, no, no. Don't you see that you're the seed of Abraham? 
So he goes back to that verse and he starts explaining it. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be for a man's uh, covenant, yet if uh, it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereunto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds. See how he's breaking apart the verse? You know, he's even, he's even going so far as to say, did you notice it says seeds, not seed? As of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. I said that backwards, but you got it. So you see, that's kind of an example of... Uh, of a textual they just, and a lot of times in the Bible to go back don't you remember what was written in the Old Testament and then they'll start breaking it apart even on the very words of that text and so that's one great way to preach um, obviously that's something that uh, we do a whole lot let me give you a couple examples real fast go to second uh, Peter you you already know by now this is probably one of my favorite passages and it comes up all the time I can't help it it just my mind goes to that uh, Valerie in the ladies meeting in ladies meetings in Iola is kind of preaching the, uh, through the teaching or whatever she preaches preaching through the same uh, same section here and when I read this text it just jumps out at me so much this this first chapter of second Peter and at the beginning he's talking about you know these who have obtained like precious faith and then when you go down Here's an ideal situation for textual preaching whenever you see a list. Okay, that's almost always an ideal place for textual preaching. Uh, verse 6 says, I mean, verse 5 says, And besides this, besides faith, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so you can think of so many ways to preach that. It's like, you know, you got your faith and then you're adding on to your faith. And I remember one time seeing that and putting on there has to do almost like with or adding to is kind of like putting on, like putting on clothes. And I was a... Uh, 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 I haven't never got the chance to preach it, preach it like I wanted to, but I thought this was when I was a youth pastor, and I thought, man, this would be a great text to preach at a like a camp meeting or something like that, where you got several messages you can preach over and over again. And here's what I would do: I would get a, 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 a fireman's uniform, all right. And each day that I preached that next message, I would say, okay, now add to. So for the first day, all I've got on is a firefighter T-shirt, right? And, uh, and I'm saying, now, uh, add to your faith uh, virtue. And I put on those fire, firefighter overalls, right? And I preach that whole message about virtue. And then the next time I get to preach, I'll say, and add to virtue knowledge, right? And, and, and just kind of going through this. And I had a sermon all broke down. Knowledge had to do, was the hat, was the helmet, you know? And, and I had everything broke down in these different ways, trying to get all creative and cute about that. And that's sometimes what t textual comes. You see this big list. You think of cute ways to do that. Here's one that you've seen before. The armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. And again, people can get creative with that. And they can say, all right, I'm going to get this kid up here. And I'm going to start dressing him in the armor of God. First of all, the helmet of salvation. And you put one of those, you know, cheap like uh, dollar store helmets on. <laughs> like that. And then you got a shield and you got all that. Uh, and, and you're going through those one by one in the list. It's, 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 it's easy to preach that way. I heard a guy one time, I wouldn't recommend this. Uh, he was still learning how to preach and everything, but, uh, but it stuck with me all these years. But he said, how we've got the message, it was around Christmas time, and he said, how we've got Santa Claus beat. And he used all the, the armor of God, uh, and he compared it to Santa Claus. He said he put on the helmet of salvation, 
uh, I mean, he, he, say, he said, he's got, the, he's got the hat, you know, the red hat with the white. And he said, we've got the helmet of salvation. And he said, he's got the big black belt. You know, we've got girded with truth. <laughs> he's got the boots and we got you. And it made some good preaching, all right? And so uh, sometimes we can do that. that. That tends to be textual because you're looking at that text and you're saying, hey, I can build this whole sermon out of that text. Incidentally, because it's so easy to be creative with that kind of a sermon, those are probably some of the most memorable sermons, okay, because of, of that fact that you can just build upon that, that passage of Scripture. All right, so pros and cons. Pros, okay, these are the positives. This is a great way to show the detailed accuracy and consistency of Scripture. Notice how in Galatians he said, did you notice how it says seed? Not seeds as of many, but seed as in one. And he was showing that, hey, the Word of God is powerful and, and accurate. Every word, right? And he's pointing these out. You can do that in textual uh, preaching really easily because you go, let's break this down and look at all the words. Now, you can go too far on that, too. You got to be careful, right, not to make stuff up that's not really in, not really in there. All right, this type of sermon is uh, great for using illustrations and object lessons, as I already pointed out. Number three, this is a good way to preach more isolated passages that seem to stand alone in the Bible. Isolated passages, you're blank there. So, you know, for instance, uh, you go through the book of the Bible and there's just this obscure verse. Like, where did that come from? P particularly in Proverbs or something like that, where you don't have to read this really long. You don't have to read the whole chapter or whatever. This, this little section stands on its own, right? right? And so this would be a good opportunity for textual preaching. You just pull that verse out and you start preaching uh, through that, that verse. All right. Otherwise, you'd go with expository and preach the whole whole thing. All right. So let me give you a couple uh, negatives. Negatives of textual. A preacher can become very reliant on this type of preaching. Again, you're picking stuff out of your Bible all the time saying, hey, that'd be a great verse to preach because it breaks down real easy. It's got an easy outline or whatever. But you can become so reliant on that. And you got this list of like. That's kind of like if, if all else fails, I'll just pull out that sermon, right? Because it's the one everyone's going to remember. It's going to go well. They can become too reliant on that and fall back on it when they're not sure what to preach. Remember, we're supposed to have a clear message from God, not pull a sermon out of a hat. I've literally got, and there's a way you can use these and not, and I think they can be good for you, but in my library, a lot of people give me lots of books, okay? I didn't go out and buy them, but uh, they've been handed down to me. A lot of great stuff, some not so good. I've got probably a section about that wide of books that are just basically sermons. I could literally pick one of those books up if I wanted to, open it up, and preach to you a sermon that somebody else wrote. And I've seen websites where, uh, or, or like uh, Facebook pages where they say, hey, share your outline for your sermons. And the idea is somebody goes, hey, man, that's a good outline. And they get up there and preach someone else's outline, right? Happens all the time. Maybe there's a way to do that. Maybe there's a place for it. I can't bring myself to do it because when I preach a message, I don't want to be preaching someone else's message. I want it to be a message that God gave me. Now, look, I, I know nothing new under the sun. You're probably going to be using a lot of influences of preaching that you've heard in your life. It's going to just come out while you're preaching. But I want it to be fresh. I want it to be something God has spoken to me, and now I'm taking that message and I'm speaking to people. I don't want it to be like, oh, man, i got to preach another message. Let me see what I can get, you know. Yeah, that was a good one. I remember I got a lot of amens on that message. Let me, <laughs> you don't want to be like that, all right? Uh, just uh, try to always stay fresh and try to be able to get these. <clears throat> It's easy also if in textual me messages, you're focusing on that, uh, on that text, right? It's easy to miss a point, the point of the whole text, okay? The context of the larger portion of Scripture. And a lot of times people get hung up on this little verse, on this little section. You know, uh, my mind just went to uh, uh, 1 Peter 2 where he's talking about, or, or I think it's chapter 3, where he's talking about, you know, bapt wherein baptism now saves you, not the, uh, you know... A washing away of, of the flesh, but in any way, he's uh, uh, you could get distracted on that little section and miss what the whole context is about, right? How many people have done that before, you know? And preach a whole message on, uh, I mean, we wouldn't go this far, but preach a whole message on why water baptism saves you, and then you're like, you missed it, <laughs> right? But we could do that if we get narrow and just wanting to just focus on textual preaching, 
That's why I think expository is better when possible. Okay? Last of all is this topical. Topical. Like I said, I know this is a lot of, uh, this is obviously teaching, and it's not super exciting, but I hope this is going to help some people out here. Uh, this is a top, uh, uh, probably the most common type of preaching we hear, okay? Particularly if you listen to a lot of sermons online. Not, I mean, not all, uh, not all preachers preach this way, but, uh, but this is probably the most common. This is going to be probably your favorite sermons. Like, hey, I want to find a sermon where somebody just rips on the sodomites, right? That's, that's topical. I want to find a sermon on eternal security. Uh, it's topical. You're looking it up. Hey, where's that sermon that I heard on eternal security? Uh, now, it could, you could come across a textual sermon that deals with eternal security or, or, or an expository <laughs> sermon that deals with eternal security, but mostly this is going to be topical. And here's how a topical goes. For instance, this very sermon, if you want to call it that, is topical, right? Somebody said, hey, you got some ideas on, on uh, how to study, and I'm thinking, well, let me just create this series and, and try to give some insight on coming up with a message. And one thing led to another. Now, originally, it was going to be more textual, all right, because I was going to go through and find all these sermon, these, these different uh, examples in the Bible of these different sermons. I gave mention of some of them. And then I was going to break those down each individually. So it would have been like, you know, three textual sermons, <laughs> if that makes sense, right? Uh, and so... Uh, uh, but then I decided not to do it that way, and then actually I got a lot of other things to say after this lesson. So, so in a couple weeks or whatever, uh, I'll go through and share some more stuff on this. But this would be more topical. There was something I felt like needed to be addressed. I felt like the Lord was opening up that door, giving me an opportunity to do that. So I said, hey, I'm just going to write this out more topical, topically, okay? Uh, but, but, but here are the, uh, uh, let me see. Okay, here's some, some tips on this, topical preaching. Try not to overuse this type of sermon. Okay, you don't, I don't think, I wouldn't recommend anybody be a topical preacher, just like all the time they're just picking topics. And, and that's, that's where you're going to run into, you're always going to be thinking about, hey, what's going on in the church right now? You know, who, who needs to hear this message, you know? And you're, instead of handling affairs, and I've actually heard preachers say this, I think, I, I think it's based on some truth. But they said like 90% of the problems in your church can be handled from the pulpit. Have you ever heard that? And what they're saying is, hey, you don't have to go individually and correct somebody or tell them that they're wrong, whatever. You just get up there and you preach it from the Bible. Now everybody heard it. Well, I think it's a lot better to just go to somebody personally and say, hey, this is the problem that I'm seeing. Hey, we need to work on this or whatever. That would be more effective because otherwise you're standing up there and that person probably knows you're talking about them. <laughs> Does that make sense? And you're just, it's almost like, hey, let me just take my, this chance to call out this person, right, in front of everybody. That's kind of a cowardly way to do it, all right? So we don't want to just pick topics like, it's just kind of like, uh, you know, putting out fires or, 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 or just, uh, I heard somebody say, I'm probably going to mess this up, but they said, no, I'm not even going to try it. <laughs> but it's not, but you don't want to just, just, you know, try to attack everybody at the same, uh, 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 you don't want to attack everybody as a whole, like, hey, this is what that church needs. You don't want to just single certain people out and hit them, but you just want to preach the Bible, right? Preach what God put on your heart. You don't even know who it's going to deal with. You might think, man, that didn't apply to anybody in here, and afterwards somebody say, man, I really needed that. Thank you. I've been dealing with this, or I've been looking at that passage of Scripture. I've been wanting that. You just don't know, and so you just preach whatever God puts on your heart, but we got to be careful not to, not to just always choose. We're just choosing what we want to preach about, Again, there's a time and place for it. It's not always wrong. I'm just saying be careful not to always preach that way. B, stay focused on the purpose of discussing the topic. Okay? Why did you pick that topic? What was your purpose of picking it? And, uh, okay, how does it apply? This is what you're looking for. How it applies to your audience. You pick a topic, and then the next thing you know, a little bit more study and a little bit more study, and then you're way off. You, you know, I totally forgot why I was picking this topic to begin with, right? I did that with this message a little bit, actually. And so it's real easy to do. You get tied up in, in all these things that you're, uh, that you're wanting, to, wanting to address. All right, spend a lot of time backing your points up with Scripture. Okay, let's not criticize this message. But 
<laughs> Ideally, you're picking a topic. Well, that's great. You know, give me some scripture. Here's what a lot of old, preach, old uh, Baptist preachers would do. They would pick a topic, pick a verse out of the, out of the Bible that kind of is related to that topic. That's a powerful verse. They'd get up and read that verse and everybody say, Amen, he's really going to rip face now. And then he'd get up and rip face for 50 minutes. And it had nothing to do with that text that he pulled out to begin with. And in fact, it had very little Bible in it. All it was is just, I have a hobby horse. This is what I want to just get off my chest. And everybody's amen because it sounds good. And hey, he's just really ripping face. But you're like, hey, show me the Bible, man. Where did you get all this stuff? How do I know what you're saying is true? So we don't want to just pick a topic and then just give our opinions on that. We've got to try to keep focusing back on the Bible. All right. I, did I write next to you the Bible example, Matthew 5 through 6? Okay. You're familiar with this uh, passage of Scripture. You can, you can read it on your own time, whatever. But this is the greatest sermon and the longest sermon in the Bible. It's the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, and uh, obviously Jesus starts with the Beatitudes. Blessed is, poor in spirit, blessed. And he's, and he's dealing with diff certain things about the kingdom of God. Then he begins dealing with uh, things in relationship to, uh, uh, you know, hey, the, don't be like the Pharisees who do all these different things. You know, he's got a little section in there where he says, hey, you, you, think, that, you think that I'm here to destroy the law? I mean, I mean, I mean yeah, I'm here to destroy the law. I'm not here to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. You know, he gives the, the, the preaching about, you know, you've heard it said. It goes back to the Bible. That's kind of textual, right? But I say unto you. And so he's, he's just kind of the, uh, uh, all that. But, but this is, is basically just topic by topic by topic. And then a little bit of textual in there on the points as well, okay? <clears throat> and you can read that. Uh, I'm actually getting ready to start a series in Iola on all the words of Jesus, okay? Kind of like if you had a red letter edition Bible, right? We're just going to in essence, go through all those red letters and talk about that. And so I'm looking forward to that. All right. Uh, let me see here. So here's some pros and cons. All right. Just trying to trying to help you out here. Uh, this uh, topical preaching has its place. But here are some uh, here are the, here are the good things about it. It can be an easy way to engage the audience. You know, you're preaching on what, what you want. The, some people say it this way. This is your next blank here. Pushing the amen buttons. We already talked about that, right? So people get up there. I know if I talk about the King James, I'm going to get a lot of amens. I know if I talk about amen. this, I'm going to get amen. I know. And it's like pushing them amen buttons, right? I know if I talk about this subject, the altar's going to be full afterward. If I talk about this particular sin, you know, if I'm talking to teenagers and I start talking about pornography, man, the altars are going to be full. And somebody will say, hey, that's the topic I'm picking. And they just really know, you know, I just want to see the altars full. That's all they really, no, no, no. We want to approach this by saying what's going to help people, what's going to get the Bible into them. And All right, but it is a good way to, get it, to engage the audience and keep their attention. Number two, throughout the year, there are certain topics that a preacher might want to address. Here's some examples. Uh, the Lord's Supper, that's coming up uh, here and so I will be going over that real soon uh, back in Iola, and I'll probably deal with it here as well, just explaining the Lord's Supper, where it is in the Bible, what the, uh, you know, some, some kind of uh, policies we have based on the Scripture. Maybe somebody's getting married, so they want to start talking about marriage, you know, or somebody just got married or, or whatever. Uh, there's, a, there's time where you want to pick that topic, eternal security, hell. I think I heard Pastor Anderson say he tries one at least one time every year to preach a sermon entirely on hell. Did you ever hear him say that? And I think that's probably good because we can so easily just feel like, hey, everybody knows about hell and, and just not really uh, explain that. Uh, sometimes there's certain topics that you want to pick. There's nothing wrong with that. Just be careful. This is an easy way to deal. Uh, I, wrote, I wrote that wrong. Sorry. This is an easy way to accomplish that. Okay. All right. But then the negatives of topical preaching, and then we'll quit after this point. The cons of Topical preaching. There's a great danger in this becoming a way for a preacher to preach whatever he wants without adequately backing up his points with clear scripture. Now, let, let me say this. A preacher can get up and say some very good and biblical things without giving you any scripture. He really can. Obviously, that's not the ideal situation. Uh, but, but, 
you know, what we, what we want to see in order to grow, we can't have that kind of preaching all the time. I can't get up here like I'm doing right now every time and just say, well, let me give you some, some wisdom, you know. And I'm trying to get Bible in here. But <laughs> let me just give you some wisdom that I've learned over my years or whatever. We're, we're not going to make it. We need, we need to get the Word of God, okay? And so we want to make sure that, uh, that, that we don't do this type of preaching all the time, even if it's kind of like uh, short on, on Scripture and stuff like that. It's a great danger for us to just start saying stuff without backing it up with Scripture. Number two, using this type of preaching properly, that's the key word there, using this type of preaching properly, is probably more difficult, one of the more difficult types of preaching. And it's the easiest type of preaching if you do it incorrectly. I can pick a topic, uh, something that I'm just comfortable with, something I, I can think about a lot of things to say about it. I can pick a topic and get up and do that. That would be the easiest type of message for me to preach. But if I'm going to do it properly, it's not going to be easy because I'm going to have to back everything that I'm saying up with Scripture, which means I picked this topic. Well, great. Now you're going to have to prove to me from the Bible. And so here's what we do a lot of times our, as preachers. We'll start thinking, what are some scriptures in the Bible that I can go to to help back this up? And so we just start picking these random scriptures, probably take them out of context if we're not careful or, uh, you know, make a verse say something that it doesn't really say, but we're just wanting to back up our point that we're wanting to make. So we just start picking all these scriptures out. Uh, no, to do this properly and to really uh, uh, handle it right, we're going to have to say, all right, what does the Bible say? I remember the Bible said something about, you know, in this situation, I know that Brother uh, Justin on Sunday is going to preach uh, about, uh, you know, it might change, I don't know, but what we talked about is a little bit about this younger generation carrying on what the old generation started and, and something along those lines. So you might think, uh, you know, man, that's the topic. That's the topic I want to talk about. And you just start thinking about that. Well, there's this story. What, what story can I think about, you know? And you just start picking out all these things. If you're not careful, you're not really given time to, to, to explain what those verses mean. You just start trying to attack this topic. But what would probably happen as you continue to study for a sermon like that is you start picking stuff out randomly, and then all of a sudden you come upon this story. And when you come upon that story, you're like, you know what, i gotta back, I got to look into that a little bit more, so I'm going to read that whole chapter. And you're like, well, I read that whole chapter. I'm not quite sure what's going on in this case. I can't remember. So now i got to go read you know, a few chapters before and get the context. Before you know it, you got an expository message <laughs> waiting for you. You know what I mean? So sometimes... Uh, topical is just the easy go-to. I'm just going to preach this topic. But what it ends up being, if you're, if you're really studying the Bible, a lot of times it ends up being expository. Okay? And then you got the challenge of figuring out how to make sure everybody understands what you're saying, and you put all this study into it, and now you just don't want to bore them to death with all this background information, but make the points and make the application that needs to be made so that they will grow closer to the Lord and uh, you'll accomplish whatever it is that you're supposed to accomplish. So anyway, I hope that helped a little bit. Uh, I'll have some, a few more lessons on this. After all, this is ministry training workshop time, and so uh, it's okay for us to have this kind of study. It's not my favorite way to do it. Of course, I'd like to preach uh, a little bit differently, but I hope that helps somebody. And uh, pretty soon, uh, you know, this Sunday, a few of you guys have a chance to preach. Anybody else wanting to preach, you know, we'll, we'll work you in right after that, and uh, you can put this to practice. Let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, men and women who want to uh, spread your word, give the gospel. Uh, think about the women, Lord, even teaching their children godly principles and, and so many things. Just, uh, uh, just today, talking to somebody who wants to write uh, children's books with a good spiritual message and in so many different ways, Lord, we want to communicate your truths. So help us to uh, be educated in how we can do that better and more efficiently and, and uh, most effectively in getting your word into other people. And, and Lord, I pray that you'll, uh, you'll just uh, work among this crowd uh, for those who, are, who have a desire to preach and, and are learning how to preach. Lord, help, uh, help me have some wisdom that I, could, I can impart into them and, and then help them just to continue to grow, Lord. I, I pray that they're ability to preach and uh, uh, passion for preaching even will way surpass mine 
and they'll go on and do great things for you, Lord. I pray you bless in Jesus' name. Amen.